A 24 hour a day Indefinite lockdown Behind these prison walls Thanks, Joe. And whenever I come to one of these um, vigils, activism events organized by the JADC, it always makes me feel as though there is hope, hope for humanity in the midst of all the horror we see. Around us we can see the wonderful performance art that is the Yellow Ribbons for Assange, which is uh, the gift of Truman. And there are so many people like Truman, like Maxine, like Emmy, like uh, Jeannie, who's been organizing the wonderful um, film showings, like Joe playing his music. There's so many people here uh, who are doing wonderful things. And I, before, um, before I forget, I must thank Joel, who every time bakes this beautiful cake for us, and Antonia, who gives us all the food that you're about to enjoy. But the, all, everybody doing their little bit, and that's what um, this is about. But before I start my uh, speech, I, I just wanted to read out a, a little poem, which was from a book um, called the Guantanamo Diaries by Mohamedou Ultslahi. Mohamedou spent 14 years in Guantanamo. He was sexually abused, he was tortured, he was um, treated in a very humiliating and degrading manner amongst other things, kept in cold rooms without any warmth, um, shackled to the ground. And it, Mohamedou wrote his memoirs and it took them nine years to get it out of that prison. And Mamadou, of course, spent 14 years without trial or charge. He had been kidnapped and taken to Guantanamo like many of the other detainees there, and is an innocent man. And he, he wrote this, um, he quotes this poem from an Iraqi poet called Ahmed Matar. I, I'm going to read it out to you. It's only a few lines, and I think it's it's specifically aimed today at those who work at Belmarsh and the police who stand with us, observing us today. And, and this is my message to you. I stood in my cell, wondering about my situation. Am I the prisoner? Or is it that guard standing nearby? Between me and him stood a wall. In the wall, there was a hole through which I see light and he sees darkness. Just like me, he has a wife, kids, a house. Just like me, he came here on orders from above. And I think the reason uh, this poem felt so resonant to me was because as a trade unionist, I recognize that the people who are working around us are not necessarily bad people themselves. They are doing their job. But as in those who were guarding Nelson Mandela at Robben Island, those who are guarding Julian Assange today can choose to be on the side of justice or choose to be treating those who are in here, in this prison, harshly. And this choice is one they make every day, every minute, in a context in which many people within this prison shouldn't be in there. They need medical care, they need psychiatric care, they need they need a social system that functions. And it is to these people that my speech today is addressed, and I'm, going to, uh, I'm not going to read it out, I'm just going to um, put my phone in front of me so that I don't forget some of the things I wanted to say to you. One of the things that Mohamedou says in his book is, to maintain your dignity, you have to first respect the dignity of others. And it is this message I bring to those in this prison who stand guard over the world's most important political prisoner today, 
Julian Assange. Julian has suffered enormously in the last decade. His privileged legal conversations, his medical uh, examinations were all repeatedly spied upon. His baby's nappy was, they tried to steal the nappy in order to test whether it was his baby. They, they would stop at nothing. They denied him due process when they deprived him citizenship, when he was kicked out of that embassy unceremoniously. It was on the back of an IMF loan. It was not on the back of judicial process in Ecuador. So when British Metropolitan Police officers went into that embassy, they were part of the problem. They were taking part in an illegal activity, illegal under international law. When Julian was treated in the way he was, dragged out, wearing a big beard because they wouldn't allow him his razor and made to look like some kind of weird stranger, it was a concerted plan. It was a concerted plan to destroy Julian. Are you, when you work here at Belmarsh, I presume you came here either because it was a job and you needed to pay your bills or because you genuinely believed when you work for the police or when you work for the prison service, you are doing something for your community. You are doing something to make this world a better place. Is helping cover up war crimes, rape, murder, torture in Iraq and Afghanistan 20 years of torture at Guantanamo Bay prison is helping cover that up what you chose to stand up to do is that what your duty is and remember that's what you do when you silence Julian Assange that's what you do when you don't speak up about the day-to-day -day humiliation and indignities he suffers are you <laughs> instead of serving the community, guarding Preeti Patel and Britain's shame, which resides in Belmarsh prison. If you are black, if you are working class, if you are of Middle Eastern origin and you work in this prison, I remind you that your brothers and sisters were being tortured and killed elsewhere in the world and that is what Julian revealed. It is thanks to him that we have the name of eight-year-old Hanan Saleh Matrud, who was shot dead in the streets of Iraq by forces who should not have, who were giving her sweets the day before. This is also, these are also the same forces who killed a good Samaritan who went to pick up wounded people and two Reuters jour journalists, Namir and Saeed, on the streets of Iraq when they were just walking around. And it is to cover up these crimes that Preeti Patel and others seek to silence Julian Assange. It is to cover up Mike Pompeo's plan. Mike Pompeo, the CIA director who says, oh, the CIA lied, cheated, smeared, and he feels no shame at it. It is this war criminal whose crimes you're, co you're helping cover up. And I urge you today to blow the whistle when you see illegitimate activities taking place in Belmarsh. I urge you to speak up in ways that are safe for you, but to tell the truth, because it is up to ordinary people like you and me to tell the truth while Julian is silenced. We don't have the big ideas like WikiLeaks, but we have courage just like Julian does. And that courage is contagious. It is more contagious than COVID-19. <laughs> I also ask you to think about whether you, when you hear about all these smears about this man, think about whether these people who underpay and overwork you stand for you and the people of Britain or whether it is this honest journalist who has told the truth 
about you know corruption where government where corporations want to sue governments in secret courts where corruption in Kenya where Arab Moy's government was causing all kinds of problems whether it is sparking the Tunisian Arab Spring these are the things that Julian does this is this is the person you have behind those walls and we urge you to treat him with care and with respect because he stands on our side, on your side and mine, in defense of the people, because WikiLeaks has always been about one thing. It's not about money. It's not about prestige. It's about the public interest. And that's what matters, and that's what we must stand for. For the people. Thank you. Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange!